I usually, yeah, take a little break, maybe. Are you ready? Okay, we'll play. Shall we play? We're going to put some paper. Good afternoon. Is this on? Is this on now? Yes. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our service today. Thank you so much for being here. We are so happy to have Reverend Judy Tyler here with us today as our guest preacher. Thank you. A little bit of a buzz, but we'll, I think Jose is going to take care of it for us. She is a brand new pastor, just recently ordained at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. And I know some of you are from Our Savior's Lutheran Church, so we thank you for being here today. This is uh, her first call as a pastor, and she has also been a deaconess and has served as a social worker with seniors and families and children with special health care needs in Phoenix. So we're excited that she's here with us today. We're also excited to have Amy Chow on violin for our special music, along with Ellen, our pianist. So thank you all for being here. The few announcements I do have is that Chaplain Peggy is continuing her Bible study on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. in the boardrooms um, on the Sermon on the Mount. And this week, our Jewish brothers and sisters are celebrating Passover, which is a very important holy holiday for the Jewish community. And every year, for several years now, we have had a Passover Seder dinner in the Life Center. And this year, it's this Thursday at 4 p.m. in here, and resident Phil Edelman will be leading us in that Passover Seder. And you can get tickets in the bistro, and they're $12 a piece. So if you would like to come and enjoy that time together. You do not have to be Jewish to attend the Passover Seder. Anyone is welcome to come. And I have been a few times and it's a wonderful time to be in community with everyone. So I think that's all my announcements I have. So please join me today in our call to worship. Our good shepherd has led us to this place. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our soul. Even though we walk through dark valleys, even though we are fearful and in need of comfort, our cup overflows with God's goodness and mercy. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord our whole lives long. Now let us sing, Easter people, raise your voices. Please join me in the confession. The joy of this Easter season continues as we are called to word and worship. Let us pause to confess our sins to our good shepherd. Savior God, God, you guide us, but we are slow to follow and stubborn. 
You welcome us to your fold, but we make others feel as if they don't belong. Forgive our life-alienating ways, our exclusion and judgment, the way we evaluate and compare, demean and degrade. Redeem us, restore us, help us be faithful as your flock. Amen. Christ forgives. Christ transforms. Christ renews. Christ leads us down the path of new beginnings. We are a new creation, ready to sing God's glory and testify to God's grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen.
understand my life. I have others who do not belong to me. I must leave them all, and they will listen to my voice. So there is one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father is loved me, and laid down my life in order to keep it up again. No one can me, but I lay it down of my own. My father. Kimberly, would you like to speak? Right here. Oh. I can care. Oh, if I here. Okay, this one seems to be working. All right, I won't touch it. <laughs> that's okay, I won't touch it. All right. <laughs> so, thank you for your patience, and thank you for all the work you all are doing. So. Have you ever gotten lost watching YouTube? Or watching something on your iPad, or something on the TV? I, this week, got really lost. I watched a lot of YouTube videos about sheep and sheep being called by their shepherd. And there was this one from Norway where there were these three different people, and they took turns calling the sheep. And the sheep, they ignored them. They just kept munching on their grass. Then the shepherd came, and the shepherd called them. And there was the bleating from one, bah, and then there was another one, bah, and then the whole flock came running. The whole flock came running when they heard the voice of the shepherd. Good Shepherd Sunday comes up on the fourth Sunday of Easter every year. And the chapter of John is divided into three sections. This year, we hear Jesus saying in chapter 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He says this right after verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. As Christians living in a really, really big city, there are 4.5 million people in the county. We may not run into sheep very often. But if we look, we may be able to see them on the outskirts, and they're cared for 
by fellow Arizonans caring for those sheep. In Jesus' time, shepherds could be settled living in a home or a dwelling and taking the sheep out. Or they could be nomadic, going from place to place. And often the task of, of caring for the sheep was given to boys and girls as they lived with their sheep in the fields and had to defend them against predators. I think of King David. Luke's account of the birth of Jesus tells us about these shepherds who were visited by the angels as they were tending their flocks by night. And then they rushed to go see this baby Jesus. Maybe some of those shepherds were a little younger than we think. Often at night, the shepherd would look for a cave or a pen or some kind of enclosed area and would sleep over the threshold or the doorway to protect the entrance to the sheep. Now, sheep do not have a reputation for being the smartest animals. Hmm. But I'm not sure that's totally true. They are very social animals. They like to be around other sheep. And they are able to know and recognize up to 50 faces of people and animals for two years. Now, I have no idea how they did this study, but it was the study I read. One thing is that sheep, unlike cattle, do not like to be herded. They do not like to be guided from the back by a dog or a cattle dog or a cowboy. They will scatter. Instead, they like to follow the voice of the leader, the voice that they recognize. Jesus is teaching his disciples and the crowd, and he's using a metaphor, an imagery that would have been known in the Hebrew scriptures. In the Hebrew scripture, there is a rich history of shepherding imagery. Even if they were not the highest in the social class system, they knew this image. We hear of King David, who at times was a good shepherd and at times was not a good shepherd. We hear the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 34 telling the Jewish leaders in the 6th century to not be bad shepherds, but good shepherds. And a bad shepherd cared only for himself or herself. They didn't care or tend for the flock. They didn't watch out for the weak or the sick. And they didn't search for the strays or the lost ones. When Jesus called himself the good shepherd using the statement, I am, he tied himself to God who called himself, I am who I am, when he talked to Moses in, um, in Exodus. The Greek word kalos is the phrase good, and the phrase good shepherd means good, model, virtuous. And Jesus is teaching them and using something that they would know about. A shepherd that does tend to the flock does care for the weak, does search for the strays and the lost. In John 10, it echoes Isaiah 40, which compares God, the giver of comfort, to a shepherd. In John, there is often a pattern of a sign or a miracle, and then there's this explanation or this discourse. And our section today starts right in the middle of the discourse, right in the middle of the explanation. So it's important to know about that story that happened beforehand. In chapter 9, on the Sabbath, Jesus has healed a man who was blind by spitting into dirt and making mud and putting the mud on the man's eyes and then having the man wash his eyes in the waters of Siloam. The man testifies to the healing as he's experienced to the different leaders who are trying to figure out who Jesus is, and they are divided. In our world, 
There are many voices that surround us, calling for our attention. In our culture, we place value on being a leader, and often following is looked down on. But in this passage, we have Jesus being the model leader, the good shepherd. He lays down his life for his sheep, and he is listening to his father and tuned into God's voice as he and the father are one, as he will say in John 10.30. He is following and he is leading, leading by example, and he models for us what good leadership looks like. Following the voice of God is holy. We are called to hear his voice like the sheep, recognizing the voice of the one who calls us and claims us, who makes us belong to the flock. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life in order to take it up again. He also reaches out to those who are not in the fold, and he goes to bring them as well. What are the voices that call you? What voice do you need to hear? When we hear it, what do we need to do? Now, sheep, I am told, can also be very destructive. Left to their own devices, they will graze an area until it is completely barren. And the human race left to our own devices can consume until barren, as we remember this so close to Earth Day. Listening to the Good Shepherd who cares for the flock, tends the sheep, goes for the lost, heals the wounded, teaches us who we are to follow and how we are to be in the world, tending each other in the conversations we have around the dinner table together, healing as we have friends who walk with us through really difficult times, and listen to us as we talk about what ails us and caring. Friends who are with us, who care and listen and are present even in the darkest nights. That is the good news, that we are called by this good shepherd who lays down his life for us, who rose again, and who teaches us how to lead and to follow following his voice. Amen. Thank you.
We're just going to continue to be flexible today. Because it's good to practice the things you need to get better at anyway, right? Flexibility. Please pray with me. Holy God, good shepherd, we turn to you in prayer because we need a leader, someone we can trust, someone who can show us the way in complicated and confusing times. The world's problems overwhelm. The burden of suffering is great. We bear witness to tragedy after tragedy on the evening news as wolves circle your innocent sheep, threatening our hope for a just world, a path to peace, and a beloved kingdom. What can we do, God? How can we be of help? What power do we have to transform evil to good? When we doubt our worth and our belovedness, remind us that we are yours, that we belong, that we have a place within your flock. Remind us and comfort us with the knowledge that in body and in soul, in life and in death, we belong to you, our Savior and Shepherd. Unite your flock with your love and help us to be as welcoming of others as you are to us. Just as the shepherd knows each of his sheep, help us to know and care for the individuals that are in particular need of your merciful grace. We especially pray for those within our own community in need of healing of body, mind, and spirit. We pray for Irene Bloomhagen, Judy Contreras, Mary Gibson, John Hickey, Michael Kerr, Ann Lindemood, Eugene Melito, B. Medrano, Mary Mulligan, Suzanne Norling, Jim Plaster, Marie Rydal, Sandy Thompson, and David Villegas. We also pray for the family and friends of Marie Davis and Charlie Schultz, who have gone from this life and into the next to be in the loving and gentle arms of God. May those who love them find comfort and fond memories, knowing they will see them again someday. Now hear us as we pray together the prayer our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us take this time to share our gifts and offering.
please pray with me. Giving God, we give you thanks and praise for all creation. The earth we stand on, the air we breathe, and the water we drink. We humbly ask you to receive these gifts which you have blessed us with and use them for the good of your world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join us in the singing of our final hymn, Be Thou My Vision. And now receive the blessing. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. Thank you.